Hey guys, Paul here once again with VHSCollector.com here to bring you another VHS review and we're going to be talking about the early 80's slasher film House of Death but before we talk about this movie I want to remind you guys as usual that we have a GoFundMe campaign going on for the rebuilding and expanding of VHSCollector.com I still have thousands of scans to enter onto the website and we're going to add some really cool new features so if you care about the preservation of a piece of our culture check out the details in a link below or the link in the button on this video and uh, perhaps you'll contribute let's talk about this movie house of death now this specific release was released in 1987 by virgin vision but it was actually released a year earlier by video gems in this glorious big box look at this 1986 this is some of the greatest artwork out there. This definitely has to rank in like the top 10 VHS cover art ever. You got this screaming mouth with a graveyard and a decapitated head and a body hanging upside down. This is definitely an awesome, awesome piece of cover art here. But I want to read the back synopsis. It's really interesting. A razor sharp machete wielded by a madman cuts through the night mist leaving dismembered bodies scattered about. The police are baffled by the sadistic killings and are helpless to stop them from happening again. What was once a small quiet town is now engulfed in fear, terror, and shock. The blade is being sharpened again as a group of college students unsuspecting of the brutal killings are planning a party. The deranged killer is planning to have a party of his own. Join him if you dare. Now what's so great about that synopsis? It applies to almost every 80s slasher film. You got a bunch of kids who are going to be hacked up by a guy with a knife. It's very, very generic and it doesn't reference anything in particular in the plot. So I just find that so incredibly interesting. Now the tagline that they have on the back here is at midnight all you will hear are death screams. So it's cool. It kind of, kind of gives a nod to the original title, Death Screams. The front is he wants your body in pieces. <laughs> That's great, right? So. This is awesome marketing for a slasher film. This artwork, um, the title, uh, the taglines, the synopsis on the back, just awesome, awesome. Then it was released a year later by Virgin Vision. Now this is the most popular version of this movie out there. Most people who have seen this movie have probably watched it on this VHS. Now when you look at the front of this box, it's a machete in the window of a house, which is interesting because on this cover, there's no house, and the movie's called House of Death. It's really, really interesting. But let's read the back. The back of this one is interesting, even more so interesting than the uh, previous one. The tagline reads on the back, In this house, all you hear are screams of death. So for whatever bizarre reason, they decide to change death screams into screams of death. I guess death screams is a little awkward to say. I don't know. Um, let's read the synopsis. What better way to celebrate the end of the summer in a quiet little town than with carnivals, bonfires, and parties? A deranged killer, excluded from the festivities as a child, has found a better way in an abandoned house with a razor-sharp machete, slicing childhood friends into ribbons. The blade is being sharpened again as a group of college students plan a party in that same little town, in that same abandoned house. Join them if you dare. Now, this synopsis is very interesting. The first paragraph of this references the movie actually it talks about the carnival and the bonfire all right then we have the second paragraph a deranged killer excluded from festivities as a child I don't know what they're referencing to that that has nothing to do with the killer or the plot um, it's just something they made up it kind of shows that the people who watch this and who are coming up with the packaging for this also didn't know who the killer was in this movie it's so confusing we'll get into it and the third paragraph is interesting because it's a slight rendition of the final paragraph on the back of this one, but altered slightly. It's really strange that they would do it this way. Now, the movie is directed by David Nelson. He's famous for being one of the Ozzy and Harriet kids in the 50s. That was actually a radio program that turned into a very popular TV show. And I guess throughout David's career, he was trying to milk off that success from that show back in the 50s. And he got a few acting gigs here and he got a few directing gigs, I guess. It just seems strange that somehow he ended up directing a slasher film in 1982. I guess that was one of the gigs that sort of popped up for him. But uh, he's well known, uh, I guess, but he's even in the 80s, he was sort of washed up. So I guess he couldn't turn down a gig to direct a movie, even if it was just a ripoff sort of slasher movie. 
film star is Playboy Playmate Susan Kiger, and uh, she has the distinction of being an adult star who went on to be in Playboy. I mean, the first one, anyway. I'm sure that Playboy didn't know she was an adult movie. It was just one that we are aware of called Hot Nasties, I believe, in 1976. I'm sure that was not on her resume <laughs> when she became a model for Playboy. But she did a few other titles around this time period. Also what's interesting is that she doesn't even go topless in this movie at all. I mean once in the movie she's wearing something very skimpy but she plays the innocent shy girl I guess. Uh, the virgin girl which is ironic. The film begins with a couple fooling around atop a motorcycle. As a nearby train passes they are simultaneously strangled with a rope. Because the print is murky and we're never given a wide shot it's hard to see what is actually happening. Both the couple and the motorcycle then fall into the river, and as they drift down into the water, we get a dramatic frame-by-frame -frame slow mo of the bodies floating. These two bodies reappear throughout the film randomly and for no reason. Next, we're introduced to a band of boring characters that are easy to confuse with each other. Lily, who works at the grocery store, Ramona, the slutty waitress, Neil, the coach, Avery, the typical fat sheriff, Casey, the mentally challenged man-child, and Diddle, the goofball. You also have Kathy, Bob, Walker, Sheila, Sandy, and a handful of others. The first hour of the movie is predominantly character development that also establishes subplots that go nowhere. Some barely notable scenes include the sheriff reading Penthouse magazine, the coach taking his assistants out for some underage drinking, and the kids hang out at the carnival. 40 minutes into the film, we're finally given another murder. In a deserted part of the fairground, an unknown woman is shot with an arrow while sitting on a water fountain. Despite Death Screams being the original title, she surprisingly doesn't scream at all. In fact, she almost appears like she's stoned or something. Rather than screaming and running for help, she takes this bizarre ride on an empty merry-go-round where she is eventually suffocated. I highly suspect this scene was shot and added to the film later to keep the interest of the audience. A subplot offered but goes nowhere involves Casey, Ramona, and the son of the sheriff. Sometime in the past, Casey was driving a car with the sheriff's son and Ramona as passengers. There's an accident and the son dies. Why anyone would allow Casey to drive a car is beyond me. Perhaps the accident is what caused Casey to become challenged. Who knows? Who cares? Once the gang leaves the carnival for a bonfire by the water, the rest of the cast finally begins to get knocked off one by one. While skinny dipping by herself, Sandy gets sliced. Rather than look for their missing friend, the gang then goes to a cemetery to tell ghost stories until it begins to downpour. It's at the 1 hour and 15 minute mark when we are finally introduced to the so-called House of Death mentioned in the title. Diddle goes to an outhouse and is killed off screen. Walter and Sheila are decapitated off screen. And a guy falls into a grave and has his hands cut off. Inside the house, Ramona falls through the stairs and is cut up by the killer below. When the three survivors move upstairs, the guy is hit by the machete through the door, although he appears to still be alive. As it turns out, it seems that only one person dies in the House of Death. When the killer has his throat cut by Lily, he falls out of the window, where the sheriff literally blows his head off, not even knowing the situation he walked into. Although it seems most reviewers are unsure who the killer is, others believe it's either Casey or Coach. I understand the Casey angle, especially since the film wastes so much time with him lurking around and developing his character. But when we compare him to the maniac, they're clearly not the same person. As for Coach, the funny thing is that the film totally sets up him as the killer. The person revealed as the killer at the end of the film appears to be the same actor. And what he says earlier in the film, that he's... Whatever you say, maybe I'm just not into cheap thrills. I had a lifetime of that with my mother. Corresponds with the killer's flashbacks at the end. Case closed? No. Earlier in the film, we witnessed Coach being attacked by a machete in a garage. Who is the killer in this movie? We have to know. And it's just, I think, bad writing, bad filmmaking, maybe some bad editing, even though the editor went on to do a lot of movies with sound recording or whatever, but there's just something wrong with this movie. Maybe a scene was missing, but we need to know who the killer is. He looks exactly like uh, the coach. Is it the coach? How could it be the coach? The coach died. So confusing. So many people think that you don't know who the killer is. It's just a random guy. Some people think it's Casey, like I said. You know, it can't be Casey, it doesn't look like him, but it does look like the same actor as Coach. And there are some links, as I mentioned, so that's another thing that bothers me about this movie. It's sort of like a riddle, but it just might not be a riddle. It'll just be a really badly made movie, a badly constructed story. You would think that these people who made this movie knew the formula. This was made in 1982. You've already had Halloween from 1978. Friday the 13th from 1980 and then you had Friday the 13th part 2 in 1981 and so on and so forth. You would think that the formula has already been set. 
You have a killing every, I don't know, 10, 15 minutes, whatever. What's so difficult to understand about a slasher film? I mean, the movie's called Death Screams. They want to see, I guess, death. But you're going to give them death an hour into the movie, other than what we get in the beginning of the movie? This is common sense. Of course, Dave Nelson was not a big horror fan, I don't think. I mean, from his uh, filmography, it doesn't seem like he had any interest in this stuff. He just, I guess, didn't know the rules. He didn't know the culture of the kids who watched these movies. That's the only thing I can imagine with this movie. It's just so incredibly slow. And many of the deaths are off screen. You'll see a machete come up or something like that, or you see someone pulled back and you just don't see anything. Now, most people in this movie haven't gone on to any real success. I mentioned Susan Kiger and the director, and a lot of the cast of this movie had maybe like two or three roles in other movies, but that was about it. It seems like a handful of them were in another movie called Dogs From Hell, but other than that, they weren't in much of anything. Now, there is a stunt guy in this movie named Don Rufin, and he was in a ton of Hollywood blockbuster movies doing stunts, which is really cool. Now, a lot of people out there want to see this movie on Blu-ray, and it needs to be on Blu-ray, because of this murky print, it's hard to distinguish the characters from each other. But I know in the Vinegar Syndrome forums, a lot of people have been requesting this title. And I think part of it is just that people are just trying to dig up titles that haven't been released yet. Because this isn't a title I'm very eager to see on Blu-ray. Although I think it deserves and should be on Blu-ray. But I mean, there are other movies I'd rather see first. But this one keeps popping up. And I'm surprised it hasn't come out yet. There might be some legal situation with it or whatever. It has been released on DVD a few times. In the UK, it was released with the title Death Screams. Here, it was released on several budget releases and all the DVD releases that currently exist use the murky VHS transfer. It's awful. So there it is, guys, House of Death. Do I recommend this one? If you're really into slasher movies, I say, sure, look for it. It's one that comes up a lot for some reason. It's not a fascinating movie. The gore isn't really good. It tries in some respects, but in others, it's just lazy. You get a lot of off-screen kills and um, maybe a body part here and there, but you don't see a lot of the kills happening. So it's just a very clunky movie. A few reviewers compared the movie to maybe Halloween, which I thought was absurd. This movie is so slow. It doesn't really develop a lot of suspense, and it's just... Uh, a bore fest for me. It takes forever for anything to happen. I really wish a lot of the deaths happened at the carnival. And that's probably why they inserted that scene later of the girl with the arrow. Because somebody was like, we need a kill at the carnival. This is the perfect location. And so uh, they tried to fix that situation with that inserted scene. But otherwise, it's just a really boring movie. Before doing this review, I hadn't seen it in about 10 years. Now I understand why. So this has been Paul with VHSCollector.com. And I will see you guys next time. Check out the campaign and stay tuned. Thanks.